Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be walking you through how I converted my 20 gallon aquarium into a vertical crested gecko vivarium. Before I started this process, I watched many YouTube videos on how I would go about completing it. One of the best videos I found outlining the whole process in detail was the one by Serpa Design, so I'd highly recommend if you haven't already, go check out that video once you're done watching this one. Today I'm going to outline some of the tips and tricks that I found while working through the process, so hopefully you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made. First off, I recommend fitting the top to your aquarium. In order to do this, you will need either a piece of plexiglass, acrylic, or polycarbonate. You will find these at your local hardware store. In my case, I was able to easily locate plexiglass, so that is what I used. Now, I don't have any footage of this process because it was a very difficult thing to film, but you're going to measure the inside lip of your aquarium and fit a piece of plexiglass to fit inside it. Once you have scored and snapped that piece, you'll measure two more measurements. One, I chose to do two and a half inches from the top, which allows you enough space to put the air holes, and the second, I did six inches from the bottom, enough place to put my substrate. Now, my biggest tip here is make sure that you measure twice and cut once. Trust me, it is not easy to change the measurements of a piece of acrylic, especially when it's a little bit big to fit inside the lip. So you'll want to probably shave off a millimeter or two of your measurement in order to make sure it has a nice fit. Next, you're going to want to drill the air holes for ventilation in the smallest of your three pieces, which will be at the top of your enclosure. I found this process to be easiest before the plexiglass was siliconed onto the tank, as it allowed me more control over the drilling. As seen in the video, I marked off holes every one inch and staggered them between the four rows. I then used a small drill bit and drilled through a piece in my work table, but you can also do this into a piece of old wood. My tip for this part of the build is to go slowly and use moderate pressure. You don't want your material heating up too much or cracking by rushing. Once your plexiglass is cut to size, you can move on to making the background. For this process, you're going to need a can of Great Stuff Expanding Foam, some rubbing alcohol, gloves, and safety glasses. First, make sure to clean the surface of the glass with rubbing alcohol to ensure it is clean and the foam adheres to it. Then, pull out the foam and get spraying. I'd recommend putting down a base layer as seen, then adding any elements you wish. For example, I added cups for plants and a feeding ledge, but you could also add cork bark, branches, etc., then build up your foam around it. Remember, the foam will expand. If you put too much though, you will just carve it out. Also, don't worry about any messes you make because it comes off the glass easy with a razor scraper. Just try not to get it on your skin. One thing to note is to try to avoid air bubbles during this process. When you carve your foam, air bubbles are exposed as you carve away the foam and can lead to holes or divots in your background. Alright, so I ran out of space on my card about halfway through this. However, if you can see, I'm about done adding all the insulation foam in. Um, so what I've done here is I have one potted plant, a second potted plant, and a built-in feeding ledge in the background. So now I'm gonna let this cure, um, and I'll come back tomorrow, add some silicone and coconut fiber, and get on with the build. After the spray foam has cured for 24 hours, you can then carve away the top shiny layer in order to allow the silicone to properly adhere. This is also the time that you can shape the background how you want it to look as a final product. You could draw this out, but I had a vision in my head that I based the shaping off of. I made sure to smooth out the lines and add in some cracks and crevices in order to give it a more naturalistic feel. Here I show you just how easy it is to clean up messes that you make during the process with a razor scraper. I should mention that sometime during this process you will need to silicone the new bottom of the tank in order to make sure it is watertight. I chose to do this between carving the background and applying the cocoa fiber because I had to wait for my cocoa fiber to dry out. To do this, apply a bead of silicone along the seams and smooth it out with your finger as shown. Again, don't worry too much about making a mess as this part of your tank will be hidden by substrate when it is finished. The silicone needs to cure for 24 hours so keep that in mind. At the same time, I went ahead and siliconed the top and bottom segments onto the new front. Make sure you run a thick bead of silicone underneath and then one on top, then smooth it out with your finger. This will hold the pieces to the frame just fine. You can tape off your edges in the process for a cleaner look, but as long as you run a uniform bead, the edges tend to be fairly straight anyway, so I skip this step. Once cured, I filled the terrarium with water to ensure that there were no leaks. If you do have a leak, just find the source, repair the silicone, and allow to cure again before testing. Once you are happy with the shape of your foam, you can move on to making the cocoa fiber layer. 
I chose to use just cocoa fiber, but you can add in bark, moss, and other natural materials to give it a more varied and naturalistic look. When working with silicone, you want to move fast, applying small sections at a time, then pushing cocoa fiber into it. A couple tips for this process are, use a lot of silicone. The more you have, the better it'll stick. Make sure all surfaces are covered in the silicone in a given area before adding the cocoa fiber. You can use a paintbrush for this process, but I chose to use mostly my hand because it was much easier in my opinion. Going section by section, spread out the silicone, then add dry cocoa fiber and thoroughly press it into the silicone. After allowing the silicone to cure for 24 hours, I stood the terrarium up and brushed off the excess cocoa fiber. I didn't throw any of this out, but rather put it aside to use as substrate. I then used a styrofoam egg carton, which I am testing as an alternative to the commonly used egg crate light diffuser for a false bottom, and surrounded it with aquarium gravel. A false bottom allows excess water to drain from the substrate preventing molding, overwatering, and many other issues which come when substrate is too wet. I top this layer off with a gardening barrier which allows water to pass through it but keeps the substrate from penetrating the drainage layer. It was then time to add substrate. Because I hadn't bought the plants I wanted to include in the vivarium yet, I used my time to paint the sides of the aquarium, masking the white expanding foam which can be quite an eyesore. For this portion of the build, I just used two coats of black acrylic paint and it worked like a charm. Once I had the plants picked out, I added a layer of charcoal which helps remove toxins from the soil and water which can build up over time and damage the plants. Then, I added a layer of homemade substrate. For the substrate, I mixed 50% cocoa fiber with 50% organic potting soil. When using live plants, make sure to remove as much of the original potting soil as possible to prevent fertilizers or unwanted pests from entering your mini ecosystem. Once planted, I topped the soil off with cocoa fiber and moss and thoroughly sprayed down the vivarium. To finish it off, I seeded the vivarium with springtails and dwarf white isopods, which will act as a cleanup crew and prevent mold from growing while breaking down plant and animal waste. Also not pictured is the last step of the process. I super glued on two hinges and the door, as well as a lock to keep it shut. Be careful when using super glue on plexiglass or similar materials though, as it will turn white where it comes into contact. That's it. It's just about ready for its new inhabitant. Personally, I'd recommend letting the cleanup crew establish itself, as well as letting the plants grow in before I add the animal to its new enclosure. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, feel free to like and subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!